the relationship between UVs and textures is something that we need to become familiar with in Maya. And in this scene, we're just going to take a look at a simple example of a box and how we would put textures onto a box. So we have this cube here, and it's just a very simple geometric shape. And we have some textures applied to it. So if I just press six on the keyboard, it will show me the textures within the scene. And here we can see that we have some textures that have been applied onto our box and it makes it look a lot more interesting. So textures can really help us to make our models more believable and more like what we see in real life. But we need to understand that there is a relationship between these 2D images that we use for our textures and our 3D shapes, such as the box here. And the relationship that we draw between our 2D textures and our 3D objects is done through a process called UV mapping. Creating a UV map allows us to put textures on our objects. The process of creating a UV map requires us to visualize what our 3D object would look like flattened out. In this case, I have an animation of this box folding outward as if it had been cut along the seams and flattened out. And I'll just show you that now. And here we can see this is what the box would look like if we just folded it out and we tried to flatten it just in the 3D viewport. And we can see that this is a flattened out shape now and would be quite easy to paint in something like Photoshop. This kind of process of visualizing a 3D object flattened out is really what we're trying to achieve when we're UV mapping. I'm just going to place the box back so that it's the 3D object again. And we'll go and take a look at the UV editor. So let's take a look at the UVs on this particular box. Because we can see that although the textures are generally looking fairly good, maybe we don't really want um, this pattern that's running across this face here and this face. Maybe we need to go and clean those up a little bit. And that will most likely be an issue with our UVs. So let's take a look at how to do that. Just to become from more familiar with this process. So our UV editor is where we do a lot of work in and around our UVs. And that's under Windows modeling editors and here's our UV editor. So this is our UV editor and this is a 2D space. Uh, so we can navigate around it by holding the Alt key and the middle mouse will allow us to pan and we can scroll in and out with the scroll wheel. Uh, we can't orbit around like we do in 3D space. It's a completely flat space in here. Um, at the moment it's empty. We have, uh, it's empty because I've got nothing selected at the moment. So I'm just going to move this down for a second and I'm going to select our box. And now we can see that our UV space looks a little bit more active. So the first thing to note is that there's a shader on the box and the shader has an image applied to it. Um, so that's the image that we see in the background here. And this image is painted in Photoshop. Just to try and clear up our view a little bit, I just click this button here and that shows me just the outline of the UVs. And these are the UVs for our box and I'm going to turn off the grid just for a second and you start to get a feel for this texture that's been created for our box object and we can see down here we can see that some of these UVs are laid out a little bit cleaner and some of them these ones down here in particular don't seem to be laid out to match the texture so well so there is a relationship going on between these UVs and this is a UV shell here. This is another UV shell. Between these UV shells in this kind of 2D window here and our 3D object. And when we UV map things correctly, what we're doing is we're ensuring that the correct parts of the texture appear on the correct parts of the model. So in this case, if I select this UV shell here, I can see that it relates to this face of my model out in the 3D space. And this de definitely doesn't look like what I want right at the moment. So I need to move this UV or edit this UV in such a way that it matches up with this texture. And then this texture should appear correctly on this face over here. A lot of the time when we're first getting used to UVs, it really is a question of orientating yourself correctly. So figuring out which UV part, and these are referred to as UV shells, these little, these little islands, 
um, which UV shell relates to which part of the model. That's very easy to do. Um, we right click and we just go select the UV shell and I'm going to click it here and I'm going to start moving it around and you can see as I start moving it around that this f the texture on this face here is being moved around as well. So I'm just going to start to drag this up and I'm going to move it over here somewhere. Uh, just so it matches up with this area of the texture and we can start to see the word fragile here and that looks a lot cleaner and it looks a lot um, and that looks a lot nicer over here I'm just going to do the same thing uh, for this shell here I'm just going to start to grab it and move it up a little bit and I'm going to do the same for this shell I'll just move it around and that's the shell on the far side just here so now we've tried to line those up a little bit cleaner. Um, we hopefully have a little bit of a better understanding of the relationship between this 2D space here and this 3D space. We can see that we have this idea of UV shells. We can also uh, select individual UVs. So I can select it here and here. I can press F on my keyboard to zoom in on where those UVs are in the 3D viewport. And we can see that they relate to this area of the box down here. So that's these UVs. So just right click, go and select these UVs. And there they are. And I can see that there's an issue here as well. That these UVs don't line up with the texture. And the texture doesn't look correct on the box. So if I start to pull these down. Uh, this is editing the UVs directly. I've just selected both of them by dragging across them. And I'm moving them down like this. We can see that this cleans up this area quite nicely. So we could pull it down more but you can see that the texture will start to stretch past a certain point and it doesn't look very nice. So there we go. So that's that UV cleaned up there a little bit. Now this was a simple example of looking at UVs on a 3D object.